Okay class, today we are going to do some synthetic substitution. In synthetic substitution, it's an alternative to direct substitution. So direct substitution is something that you already know. So for example, if I have x of negative 3 and I wanted to find f of negative 3, I would replace negative 3 in for my x wherever I see my x and get an answer out. And you know how to do direct substitution. I would plug in my negative 3 and then I would do it to the fourth power which is a positive 81 and then I would multiply it by 2 and then I would do negative 3 cubed and multiply it by negative 5 and negative 3 times negative 4 and then add 8 and I'd get a large number. So synthetic substitution is an alternative to directly plugging in negative 3 into our function. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a little L and we're going to put all of the coefficients that we have including the negatives in the top row. So I have a 2, then I have a negative 5, and then notice that I don't have an x squared term. So because I don't have an x squared term, it's like 0x squared. So I have to put a placeholder of a 0 in because I don't have the x squared term. And then I have the negative 4, and then I have the 8. So you take all of your coefficients, since we're missing an x squared term, I put a 0 in, and continue all the way down. If you're missing your constant term, don't forget to also put a 0 in at the end. So whenever you're missing a term in the middle or at the end, you need to put a 0 as a placeholder. And then the number that we want to evaluate our function at, so negative 3, is the number that we're going to put out here. So the first step is to bring the 2 down. And I'm always going to multiply the number down here by the negative 3. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And then I'm going to add straight down. So I'm going to add negative 5 and negative 6, which is negative 11. Then I'm going to multiply negative 11 times negative 3 is a positive 33. Then I'm going to add straight down, which is 33. Now I'm going to multiply 33 times negative 3, which gives me negative 99. Then I'm going to add straight down, which is negative 103. Then I'm going to multiply negative 103 times negative 3, which is a positive 309. And I'm going to add straight down, which is 317. And that right there is the answer that I get when I plug f of negative 3 into my function using synthetic substitution. It's the same answer I'd get if I did direct substitution, which is when I plug negative 3 into those numbers. Oftentimes, the arithmetic, when you directly plug it in, can be quite large. But with the synthetic substitution, the numbers can remain smaller and oftentimes easier to calculate in your head, which is an advantage when you don't have a calculator. So let's go on to the next problem. So for the second problem of synthetic substitution, I have my function g of x and I don't have any missing terms. So when I write out my coefficients, that's negative 3, 1, negative 12, and negative 5. You have my box and I'm plugging in 2. And ultimately with synthetic substitution, I want to find g of 2 and I want to find what that answer is when I plug 2 in. So if I did direct substitution, it would be 2 cubed, which is 8, times negative 3 is negative 24, and then I'd have 2 squared, which is 4, so I'd negative 24, and 4, which would be negative 20, and I'd have negative 12 times 2, which is negative 24, and then I would subtract 5. So I get the same answer either way. Um, but here we're going to move on to synthetic substitution. So I'm going to bring my negative 3 down. I'm always going to multiply negative 3 times the number out there, which is negative 6. Add straight down, which is negative 5. Then we're going to multiply the outer term, which is negative 10. I'm going to add straight down to give me negative 22. I'm going to multiply those numbers, which is negative 44. And I'm going to add straight down, which is negative 49. And so this is negative 49. So this is what synthetic substitution is. And later we're going to move on to synthetic division, which uses the same process, which is why we're starting to look at it now. 
Well, thank you and have a good day.